Hi, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle. I wanted to briefly introduce the Arbitrage Pricing Theory Model, or APT model, to FRM candidates. And this is from Richard Grinnell's Active Portfolio Management. Here on the left is the exhibit that illustrates the APT model, and over here are the formulas. And really, the APT model is in yellow, but I wanted to compare it to two models that might be more familiar. First here, the structural risk model, where we say returns are a function of exposures to various risk factors, and we can have several, up to K. So that's our structural risk model, and the APT is much like that. The only difference that is the APT, instead of a focus on risk, is focused on returns. So I'm going to take that off because that was just for comparison. And now in yellow, the APT model. Grinnell gives two versions. Why is that? That's simply because this version here is the ex post version. That is to say, it's after the fact analysis. Because we would get, we would solve here for the exposures by conducting a multivariate regression. And as you know, if we do a regression, we do expect some residual or noise, and so that's this term here, the specific return that can't be expressed by the regression or by exposure to the common factors. So the cousin to this formula here is given right here, this is really the one we care about, and this is the x ante version. And notice the notation here, which is not up here, which says the expected return. And so now we can say the expected return or the expected excess return is a function simply of this sum product. That is to say, we have up to k factors in the model. For each factor, the stock or security has an exposure, denoted by x, to a common factor, denoted by m. Now, when we're talking about expected excess returns, we're not expecting the error or residual, so it's not here in the expected formula. That's the key difference. But otherwise, you can see it's just a sum of products. We take the first exposure to the first factor, add it, add that to the second exposure multiplied by the second factor, add that to the third exposure multiplied by the third common factor, and so on. In Grinnell's case, there's four factors, and the beauty of the APT is very flexible, flexible, so this just happens to be one approach. His factors are growth, that's earnings growth, bond, that's the government bond, and this, this really represents a macroeconomic factor. This is size, the size factor, equity as measured by equity uh, capitalization, and return on equity is a common factor. And so here in yellow is the APT model that we care about. I wanted to also compare it to what's probably more familiar to us, the capital asset pricing model, because the capital asset pricing model is a special case, a single factor version of the APT, um, minus some theory or plus some theory. But the idea here is if we imagine the APT with only a single factor, so K equals 1, then we're going to have a simple product here the product of an exposure times a single common factor. That's what the cap M is. It's a single factor model where the exposure is the stock's beta or sensitivity to the common factor, which in the case of the cap M is the expected excess return on the market or what I like to call the equity risk premium. So you see how if K equals 1 in the APT, we have a single factor, we could be talking about the capital asset pricing model. But the APT generalizes on that by having several factors. So now if we focus on this version here, expected excess return, as the sum product of exposures to factors, we can understand Grenold's exhibit if we take AT&T, for example, each of the stocks is in an industry, and there's an industry forecast. And the industry forecast for telecommunications is 6%, such that if there were no exposures to any of the common factors, the predicted excess return for AT&T would be 6%. Now, here are AT&T's 
exposures to the four factors. These four coefficients here, which we could think about really as partial betas. And up here are the factor forecasts. So these are forecasts about the factors that are common to all of the securities. So see how these are common and these are specific to the stocks. And then if we take AT&T, what do we have for the expected return? We have the industry forecast plus AT&T's exposure to the growth factor and that's a product, so negative 0.16 multiplied by 2% plus AT&T's exposure to the common factor that is bonds and that factor return, that forecast for the factor return is 2.5% plus AT&T's exposure to the size factor, which is large because AT&T is large, so it has a large X here, which is sort of like a beta of 1.47 multiplied by the factor forecast common to all the securities of negative 1.5. And finally for ROE, such that if we get to eight, the APT model, you can see I've got a simple sum product in there. I take the industry forecast and then I add the sum product so it's really this times this, plus this times this, plus this times this, plus this times this. And we get a forecasted return, or at t under the APT model of 5.33. And just to compare that, Grinnell's got the capital asset pricing model as well. And this is the single factor version. So this one's very straightforward here. The expected excess return is simply at t s beta, of 0.84 times here the expected excess return of market on the market of 6%. So you can see the cap M is simply a product. 0.84 times 6% gives us 5%. And so you can see the mechanics are just the same here, but we only used a single factor. The single factor being the expected excess return on the market. But for the APT, we don't expect it to be the same because we've got four exposures to four common factors. Product of this plus product of this plus product of this plus product of this. And in this case, it's actually under the industry forecast. That's okay. That's due to these negatives here, this negative mainly right here. Negative a, an exposure to this growth factor, which has a forecast of 2%. So I hope that helps illustrate the arbitrage pricing theory model or APT model. This is David Harper, the Bonnock Turtle. Thank you.